from up here? No, probably not. I'll, I'll stoop down here. Uh, try to not try not to make this a stupid uh, presentation. Uh, so I'm Henry Spindler from DCM Logic. I'll be talking about boiler monitoring uh, for superior performance. And uh, in my extensive archival research for this presentation, I made an astonishing discovery. And that is that Socrates has been misquoted for hundreds of years. Turns out the original Greek reads, a boiler unexamined is not worth running. So that uh, kind of gives you a feel for the, uh, for the presentation today. Uh, so we're at a point in our industry where it's time to do more than to switch fuels and hook up new boilers. Uh, it's time to perform and it's time to really shine. Uh, lots of us uh, will be metering the BTUs that we produce, um, by our, uh, that our biomass boilers produce, and we'll be uh, doing that with an eye towards getting as many wrecks as we can, uh, including uh, myself. Unfortunately, some of us are going to be disappointed uh, looking at the BTU meter or looking at fuel bills. And this is where the proverbial wood chip hits the hammer. So it's time to stop oper it's time to start operating at the next level to move from biomass 1.0 to biomass 2.0. And you're not going to do that without comprehensive ongoing boiler monitoring. So, boiler performance monitoring. This is more than displaying a few basic data points on a shiny display or on a web page. So what I'm talking about is a is comprehensively logging uh, all of the data points associated with a boiler. Hundreds of points, parameters, variables, digital I.O., uh, boiler states, and so on. My intent for this presentation is to leave you with a, a few key boiler performance shortcomings to look for in any installation. So now that we def we've defined what we're talking about, we can move on to some real case studies. I'm going to start out close to home. Uh, I'm a controls engineer, and I thought I was pretty good at interpreting system per performance, even from lists of numbers. You can imagine my chagrin when I got around to plotting the performance of my own heating and distribution system. After all, I had designed it. Uh, I was a little disappointed. Displays of numbers, and that's all I had had at the time, just don't cut it. They, even if you think even if you think of yourself as an expert, you can't do it with lists of numbers. So today I'd like to show you some first glimpses of previously unmonitored systems, and in some cases the dramatic improvements you can make as a result of that monitoring. Ouch. Ignorance might be bliss, but what you don't know probably will hurt you. This is an installation where the boilers, there are two boilers here, they turned on and off a total of 31 times in one 24-hour period. They're never on long enough to effectively deliver heat to the facility. So up on top, uh, you have... Up on top, you have, uh, in the red and the blue, a boiler and buffer tank temperatures spiking and oscillating. Uh, down below, you have the fuel feed rates to the boilers. Every vertical line there is, represents the start sequence of a boiler. So the details here aren't really critical. You can just tell by looking at this ugly picture that something's wrong. And the boilers are running and heating for about an hour for every start, and that's all. Well, bring in a, a great technician with uh, access to full uh, boiler data make some changes, and look what you can do here. Uh, we've whittled, he, he was able to whittle this down to uh, just 10 start and stop cycles a day, gone from uh, about one hour of heating per start to three, three and a half hours, and the heat output is very much smoother. This is a lot prettier, I think you would agree. So those pictures there were just to whet your appetite. Uh, I have a couple things here that are key in any monitoring situation. Uh, many of you here have probably heard Scott Nichols uh, give a presentation uh, where he demonstrates the downside of, of uh, starting up and shutting down a boiler with a match. Light the match, and you see all the smoke come off it. 
uh, and create uh, create all the pollution. But um, beyond the inefficiency, beyond the pollution, the important thing is that if your boiler is spending all of its time starting up and stopping, and in some cases that might take 30 or more minutes to do that, you're going to have a much greater likelihood that your oil boiler, your fossil fuel boiler, has to come on to make up the, uh, the shortfall. So do whatever you can to uh, provide nice long run times for your boilers. Uh, one hour per start really stinks. Uh, if you can get four or more hours, that's great. Um, watch out for interactions with building energy management systems. Ensure your boilers are clean and figure out if the heat is going where it's supposed to. But here's a situation where it would be nice to have a pointer. Does it show up anywhere? Let's try the mouse. So to orient you a little bit, um, these blue lines, these descending blue lines, are the levels of pellets in the day bins. And the red and the green below are the fuel feed rates for two boilers. Let's just call them the red and the green boiler. So red starts off, uh, lost the mouse again, uh, red starts off with a nice long eight hour runtime. But one of the parameter settings says turn off after eight hours and clean. So it turns off, uh, well, you can see it there. Uh, I, I can't point it out very well. So it turns off, oh, thank you. Is it the middle button? Oh, so the red one turns off here and the green one takes over and it runs for about an hour. Then it's time for its, sorry, then it's time for its scheduled day bin refilling. So it turns off, fills its day bin. So the red one takes over. It runs for about an hour, then it's time for its scheduled refilling. It turns off, and then the green one takes over. Some nice short cycling there. So not so nice short cycling. Uh, here's another uh, short cycling example with a before and after. Again, up above, we have temperatures of the, the boilers and the buffer tank. Look at the spikes here and uh, the oscillations. Down below, we have the feed rates of the two boilers. Again, the vertical lines represent the beginning of the start cycle. So you can see beforehand, very spiky. After these adjustments, maybe a dozen parameters, much smoother operation, much better heat output. The spikes are gone, and look at that nice long runtime. So here's a situation we were able to uncover uh, by monitoring where a controls company thought it knew how to incorporate the biomass boilers into its overall control system. Unfortunately, the use of the off switch here and here doesn't work so well for biomass boilers. So these boilers were running along here, then they were cut. And then they were turned on again, and these three boilers ran for about a half an hour before being cut off again by the building energy management system. That's something you could track easily, monitoring, and then rectify it, uh, perhaps by removing a cord or something. Uh, boiler hygiene. So we have monitored the BTU output of a biomass boiler in all uh, stages of cleanliness. And there's a dramatic impact on the output of the boiler after the cleaning. Uh, typically, it might be about 10% boost in output. I've seen up to 20%. That makes a big difference. If you are, uh, even if you have one uh, 60kW boiler, that's an extra 20,000 BTUs per hour that you can bring online. Uh, and that may be the difference between uh, bringing on your uh, oil boiler uh, or letting it stay idle. So this is actually quite important. Uh, last thing is the um, looking at where the heat is going. Is it going in the right location? And I'll start on, on the bottom here. This is a plot of circulator speed for a, a boiler circulator speed. It's running along, going faster, and then boom, it's off. Turns back on, uh, runs for a while, and it's off again, and then runs. Because that circulator is turning off, there's nothing to take the heat out of the boiler. And up above, the boiler temperature is plotted, and you can see that that temperature spikes. Uh, 
in some cases, those spikes might be big enough to shut the boiler off and cause more short cycling. So this is definitely worth looking into and fixing. Uh, here's another situation where a circulator has run amok uh, after the boiler stops. So this red line is the pellet feed for the boiler and it stops. Generally when the boiler stops, the circulator runs for a time to clear the heat out of the boiler uh, and uh, take it to the system. In this situation, the circulator stays on for a full 25 minutes. And the boiler, the temperatures are shown up above. The boiler temperature certainly is cooled off, but the buffer temperature, buffer tank temperature, is unnecessarily cooled by this runaway circulator. So again, that's something you can notice easily and remedy by adjusting some parameters. So I'd like to conclude with a slide showing really why this all matters. Uh, so not only does monitoring permit your equipment to run uh, better, last longer, you can achieve some fuel savings. So here's a situation where a number of parameters were changed on a biomass boiler in the mid-season. So you're looking at three months here uh, from the left to the right. And in the middle, the parameters were changed. This is labeled there. The uh, runtime per start for this boiler went from about one hour per start to about four hours per start. Uh, as a result of these uh, parameter changes at this point. And you can see there's a dramatic effect on the fuel consumption of this boiler. So boiler monitoring can create savings for your customers and allow you to provide uh, performance that you're proud of and that's worthy of Biomass 2.0. Thank you.